What's happening, sports fans? Welcome back to another episode of Mom and Papa Joe's. We're headed towards that Super Bowl. And one of the best things you can cook for a Super Bowl party, or just if you're uh, entertaining family, is a pork butt. Uh, they're very cheap and they can feed a lot of people. They're so versatile. Uh, everything from tacos to nachos to you name it, you can do it with a pork butt. And they're very forgiving. So I'm gonna show you how Mom and Papa Joe, uh, how we do pork butts. Uh, this is gonna be a low and slow cook. I'm gonna put it on probably about midnight tonight. And uh, wake up in the morning and probably put in some butcher paper, no foil. Absolutely zero foil. Uh, I want to thank you guys for stopping in to hang out with us. If this is your first time, please check us out. Look around our uh, channel. And uh, in the end, I know you're going to want to hit that subscribe button. Don't hesitate to do so. We really appreciate it. Uh, we're giving you some good stuff. Without further ado, let's get moving. What I've got here is a nine pound Smithfield pork butt. Uh, it doesn't require a whole lot of trimming, but I'm one of those that I like to uh, get rid of some of this excess fat just to create more room uh, for the development of a bark. So yes, I will knock that off. Uh, not much of a fat cap. Uh, I usually trim off my fat cap till it looks like this, so I thin it out. I don't remove it completely, but I do want to thin it out some. Uh, and we'll get there shortly. And again, all I'm doing here, man, is just exposing some of this meat just to create more room for development of a bark. You don't have to get it all, just get what you can. Fat cap. We're going to go immediately into seasoning. I'm going to use my usual mustard binder. And if you've watched me before, by now you understand that this mustard is simply a mechanism uh, to keep your rubs attached to your meat. Gonna come back with my usual coarse cracked black pepper. I'll come back next with my base rub, chupacabra, all purpose. Nice heavy layer. Nice, herby, herbaceous, I guess. And of course, my dog chooses now to, to go to his bowl and eat. So I've done the sides as well as the bottom. I will come back with it sweet. I'm actually using Blue's Hog, sweet and savory. 
as my covering rub. Again, another nice healthy coat. Do not be afraid. All these seasonings, once cooked, mixed in with the meat juices and oils, will carry over to the pieces on the inside when you mix them up. Like I said, I'm gonna put this on someplace around midnight. By, uh, by about seven o'clock tomorrow morning, uh, we should be in the neighborhood of Rapid, seven, eight o'clock. I'll see you in a few hours, midnight. All right, it's 11.30 p.m., man. We are rocking the Timberline 850 tonight. This puppy has got a nice sweat going. We're getting ready to drop it. I've got the pit on 220 degrees, and I am rocking super smoke. I'm gonna be looking at this when I wake up in the morning about seven or so. In the meantime, we're gonna just let her do her thing. See you later, baby. All right, it is 7 a.m. Brisket, uh, pork butt went on at, ooh -hoo, at 11.30 last night. So we're looking at right around seven and a half hours. All right, we're pushing 162 in that area. 160. One sixty. All right, I've got that awesome color, and uh, I think we're getting ready to wrap this. So I'm going to pull. All right, let's get this baby wrapped. We got two sheets of uh, butcher paper that I'm overlapping. back with my pork butt meat side down I'm actually going to pour just a little bit of apple cider vinegar and maple syrup it's about a one-to-one -one ratio. That's gonna help me jump start a little brazen inside this package. Remember I'm meat side down on this pork butt. So I'm trying to wrap as tightly as possible. Gonna do one rotation and I will be back fat cap down. And there we go. This baby is ready for the pit. All right, folks, we are at 14 hours, about 14 hours, five minutes, uh, and I think we should be ready to go. 203, 204. Man, really probes nicely. 204 on this end. We're gonna pull. We're gonna let this rest for at least an hour, maybe an hour and a half. All right, we have given this girl almost two hours to rest. Let's take a look, see what we have exactly. <laughs> All right, the bone comes clean. Oh. She is just coming apart at the seams, man.
So with the with the really nice trimming that we did to start with, folks, that is pretty much all the excess fat that was left in this thing. So that is a serious yield right there. Not very much uh, waste uh, was cooked. And again, this just comes apart like nobody's business. I'm not a fan, I don't like shredded. So I like to, to leave my pulled in nice big chunks. Ah, that beautiful bark. Beautiful smoke ring. Ooh, deep in that center. Still had some heat. Beautiful bark. Mmm. Perfectly seasoned. Blues hog and chupacabra. Awesome combination. And you notice I'm not gonna sauce this entire thing because for some of the dishes you make with this, you don't want a barbecue sauce. Uh, like uh, when I do tacos, I don't want a barbecue sauce taco. I like to make a different cream sauce for my tacos. So I do not sauce the entire thing. But I do have some sauces that I wanna try. And you guys, uh, I don't know if you've ever tried them, but let me know what you think. This little gift packet, or gift packet or sample, whatever you want to call it, but five different Blues Hog. And let me tell you up front, I'm not affiliated with Blues Hog in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Uh, but this is something I wanted to try. So I'm gonna pop this open and uh, just sample all of them. I've had the, uh, the Blues Hog original. I love the Tennessee Red. And I, uh, I am also a fan of the Champions Blend. The other two I've never tried, so we shall see. All right, in no particular order, let's see uh, what we've got here. That's the Champions Blend. Mm, that is tasty. Sweet, tangy. Nice little bit of heat. I like that. It's the original. In that original, I can taste the molasses. Not always the biggest fan of the aftertaste molasses gives me, but that's not bad. I know I can pick out the Tennessee Red it's a thin, watery, vinegar-based sauce. This is Tennessee Red. Mm. Tennessee Red and pulled pork, a match made in heaven. All right, next is the mustard. This is kind of a new thing. I'm here to tell you, this mustard is ridiculous good. It's so different. Mm-hmm. And lastly, we have the Smoky Mountain Sauce. Sports fans, I'm here to tell you, you can't go wrong with either one of these on pulled pork. And this pulled pork is absolutely delicious. I spoke earlier about the versatility of pulled pork. Guys, gals, you make this for your Super Bowl, it's cheap, you can feed a lot of people. Tacos, sliders, quesadillas. Uh, you wanna do uh, 
just about anything. One of my favorite is nachos, pulled pork nachos. I am still eating, and I'm gonna hit it with that Tennessee red. Mm, mm, mm. So there it is, uh, sports fans. Another solid cook, pork butt. Like I said, give this a shot. And if you don't have the patience to cook uh, 13, 14 hours, simply bump it up and use foil instead of uh, butcher paper. That will really speed up your cook. But once again, the versatility of pork butt is also quite forgiving. Well, thank you guys for joining us, for hanging out with us, watching our videos. Please continue to do so. And we're going to continue to give you the good shit and not the bullshit. Stay tuned for our follow-up uh, follow video. Uh, I think uh, Black History Month, we may do something Black History-ish. Uh, we want to thank you guys again for be being fans of Mom and Papa Joe's. If you haven't yet hit that subscribe button, please go ahead and do so. And we look forward to seeing you the next time. You guys take care.